Good evening. It's November 29th of 2016, and we're here for our special Brattleboro Select Board meeting to discuss the public works aspect of the proposed FY18 budget. Um, we'll call the meeting to order at 5 o'clock. Jan, is the meeting been officially warned? Yes, it is. Thank you. Uh, the first, uh, we want to greet everybody who's watching this meeting, both uh, live and recorded. I want to thank everybody who's in attendance. Welcome personnel from Public Works. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank our ASL interpreters for being here. And uh, I guess the first item on tonight's agenda is Chair's remarks. I have no particular remarks tonight other than wish everybody a good holiday season. Uh, town manager's comments? The same, thank you. Uh, select board comments, committee reports, anything? Ditto. It was a vacation week. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so I guess uh, the next item on the agenda is public participation. If anybody wants to speak to something that's not on the agenda. All right then, so we'll dive right into our FY18 budget relating to public works. And I expect we'll turn it right over to Stephen Hamm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Steve Barrett, Public Works Director. Hannah Tyler, Highway and Utility Superintendent. So what I'll do is, um, to not bore you to death, I will just go over some of the highlights of the budget and then we're here to answer any questions that you may have or details to deal with the operating budget or the capital. So uh, first of all, um, I'd like to start with the Public Works Administration section, which is the first section. Um, everybody have that page right page in front 13. of them? Okay, great. Um, so, the, so the first part of the budget is the administration and the staff salaries and associated personnel line items with the administrative category were negotiated in the collective bargaining agreements with DPW. So there's some of these items um, relating to the salaries that you can see. Um, there's a clothing allotment, those items there. Um, you'll see the increases, The, for instance, in the staff it's 5.29 and Referring to the clothing, it's a 5.77% increase, and those are associated with the bargaining unit. If we go down to uh, Public Works Bridges, uh, there's a, a slight increase there, um, and that's for the maintenance of other, all the bridges in town, which we have many of. The drainage budget you'll see is up a little bit at uh, 8.21. And really that's uh, for the pipes and the supplies, it's an increase for materials and the piping themselves. You can see there's a $600 and $1,000 for other materials. Other materials is anything associated with fixing the drainage in the town of Brattleboro. Uh, summer roads, um, well, I can, let me go back up here a little bit. So we got drainage and then under equipment, there aren't many changes. Under the public works, gas and oil, um, again, there aren't many changes here. It's pretty much level funded. When you get into the summer roads, um, you'll see that we've requested um, some additional money for gravel of $1,500. That line item is a $31,500. Guardrail, um, we're, we're hoping and requesting to reintroduce this line item um, into the budget. It has been taken out of the budget over the years. Um, as far back as 2001, it was funded at $8,000, and then around 2008, it was removed completely from the budget, and there's a need to replace several sections of guardrail um, in town this year. The <clears throat> next item would be sidewalk repairs. Um, we've we've uh, asked for a, a pretty good increase in that, from 10000 to 25000 um, that's to make repairs around town on the sidewalks. There's over 30 miles of sidewalks, and this is to repair small sections outside of contracts. This is uh, pretty much done by public works personnel um, in the various sections of town that um, need spot replacement. Uh, moving down into the uh, public works street uh, streets, the retaining walls, um, you've heard a lot about returning, retaining walls the last few years. This is for a repair of smaller retaining walls around town. There's a variation of concrete, stone, um, that need various repairs each year. So we've asked for $1,000 more from that. 
Um, traffic safety, as you're aware, and the board has supported uh, traffic safety recommendations. Um, we've asked for an increase from 5,000 to 10,000 um, in our line item here. And that's for the various devices or um, reconstruction, small reconstructions of uh, um, crosswalks and, and various tools that we've talked about in other meetings. The tree care expense, um, this continues. We uh, have a lot of trees in town that um, we've had to remove and they're very expensive. Um, some trees can cost up to 1800 or over 2000 per tree to take down. So we've, we've asked for an increase in that line item from 10000 to 12000 And other than that, the, the, what we call the yard expense would be the public works department. We've asked for an increase from 7000 to 20. Um, as you're aware, the public works facility itself is, um, was built in 1950 and it needs continuous uh, repair at times. Um, it needs regular upgrade, but we're also um, challenged with, you know, a lot of garage doors and windows and such that, that do need repair and replacing. And also um, some leaks that we have. So that's why I've increased that, just to stabilize and keep public works um, in good order. So with that, um, I would like just to briefly go over capital. Can I ask you a question? If you will, or, or would you like to me to? Yeah, go just ahead. Just so I can. Uh, sure. Can two, operating first, if you want to. Yeah. Sure. Two, just two quick questions. Yep. Uh, diesel. Yes. In 2015, you spent 70,000. 2016, you were 39,000. Yes. And now you're up to 80. Where are, do you have any idea where you are year to date actual for this year? Year to date, I don't, but I can tell you last year was that, that off year for, uh, we just didn't have a big winner. Um, going back into 2014, we spent 108,000, and going out in 2013, we spent 93,000. So it's kind of one of those areas where if somebody could give me a good idea of, you know, the pricing and such, it's, I feel it's fairly conservative to be at 80. When you look back in 2014, it was 108,000. And, you know, so I, I really don't know, Dick, okay. as far as where that's going to go. And then uh, just a one quick follow-up. Uh, gasoline, you have at 8,000. And then in yard expense, you have another fuel expense for 11200 Why wouldn't the fuel expense all be lumped into one? Well, the yard expense is a, is a different that is for fuel oil. It's heating oil. Heating oil oh, for the building. Oil. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Heating oil yeah. and the others for actual. Thank you. Yeah. Right. That's why I marked those same two lines. And the, um, the, what? Who's looking at gasoline? Um, so I can't remember why I had that one, but I did with diesel. Did we, are the new machine, we, we bought a new dump truck, um, yep. a couple other um, machines, we're regularly buying new equipment, and the new diesels don't have to just idle for hours and hours and hours. No, but they, they, but they do have a certain, um, at times you do have to put them in a high idle, they're preset, and they'll yeah. go into a high yeah. idle to, Burn Wind the particulates worse, yeah. out of the exhaust system. Right. So they do operate a little bit different um, right. than the older diesels, yeah. and but it's not really. You don't have to idle them all the time, but it doesn't do them any good to, to start and stop them. Right. All the time either. But. Yeah. Well, not not all the time. Yeah. I was just wondering. Yeah. Because the the price per gallon fluctuates, I'm pretty sure it'd be hard to track the savings from not idling, but. Yeah. Maybe if the energy committee's got nothing else to do, so yeah. <laughs> put that in the spreadsheet for us, too. Great, thanks. Well, if there's any other questions about the operating budget, we can take them now or we can take them later, whichever you prefer. Um, but why don't you go on to capital now, unless somebody's got another question right this second. Ago. Okay. Um, capital, I'll start with uh, street paving. Um, we had a, a pretty good internal discussion about uh, paving. Um, I had originally um, proposed a three hundred thousand um, plus a budget, but uh, through discussions, um, we've we've reduced that to two fifty. And I think 
one of the reasons that um, we feel that we can justify that is we just did receive two hundred thousand dollars from the state um, to help us with our roads because of the I-91 project. So I guess you'd call it a little offset year where maybe we should take advantage of that savings this year. And I will be back to you next year, I guarantee, for 300 plus. But I think it's appropriate this time, based on some of the current funding that we've received, to uh, look at some of the other more important items in the budget than, than the paving. So that's why that's reduced. William Street intersection, this, this goes back quite some time. Um, I'm bringing it up so that, that the subject doesn't go away. Um, the subject's been with us for, for quite some time. It goes back to 2002. Um, there was actually an article that went before the town meeting that uh, was $270,000 to make improvements to that intersection. Um, and this is at Western Avenue um, by the country store. And what happened as we, as we got into that project back in 2002, the Department of Public Works, town manager, and the select board decided that we would recommend that town meeting um, pass over that article that year so that we could do further research because as we, as we originally did a design on the number, we got more information and we felt it was important to, uh, to not pass that article at that time and to revisit it. Since that time, we haven't really revisited that or funded um, any money towards looking at the intersection. And we can continue to, uh, to hear about safety concerns at that intersection. So what this money is, is the 35,000 is, is to allow us to take a look at that. And you know there may be some legal issues we need to look at. There may be some design issues. Um, you know, it's really up to the board where you want to go with this. I just don't want to see um, this intersection go off the radar. I think it's very important. Um, there are incidences and accidents at that location, so that's why the money's there. Um, so. Okay, so then, um, do you want me to continue through? Or yeah, go through okay. the rest of the gap. So, we'll so that's, sure. you know, to simplify it, a very complicated situation, very complicated. Um, that's uh, that's what we're looking at is to revisit the intersection. There's there's all kinds of um, issues there, and there's um, there's been a lot of work that's done, and the town has spent some pretty good amount of money to uh, to do a lot of research in that area and a preliminary design. So with that, um, I'd like to move on to uh, the uh, one ton dump. That's 115. That's not what you would traditionally uh, think of as a regular one-ton uh, dump truck. The, uh, it's a little bit bigger. It's, it's actually like a ton and a half. The uh, GVW for a regular standard one-ton truck would be about 13,000 pounds. This would be capable of a little bit more to 19,000. Um, and what this truck is, would be used for is to it's, it's basically a small dump body that's used for construction in the summer seasons. And in the wintertime, it's used to keep the, the secondary, the, not the secondary, but the gravel roads open in the country before the grader, graders do their final pass. So it's, it's an important piece of equipment. Um, it's, it's a heavy duty um, pickup truck, or one ton truck is what it is, with a plow. Where is that on our little... That's in that? your um, equipment capital fund. So, the, so, so if you go past those two oh. and pass the next page. Oh, it's a yellow thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Pink thing. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry. Go. Thank you. Got it. So then the truck, the existing truck is a 2003 truck, um, no. and it's currently out of service. We've taken that truck offline. Um, we don't feel it's, we should expend any more money on it. It's 14 years old. Um, steering col column, the brakes, the body, uh, it can't be inspected. I basically just took it off the road. And we'll wait a decision on whether we decide to replace this or not on what we do with that truck. So, And we've, we've really uh, given it all the life we can. We actually took the metal um, back body and we had to cut that off and put wooden stake bodies on it. So it really has given us a true full life. The sweeper, um, again, this is, a, this is a 2005, the sweeper 
um, is is pretty active um, throughout the year, uh, except of the winter months. So it starts first thing in the spring, and it is out uh, pretty much all summer long, all the way in through the fall. It uh, does the downtown area uh, twice a week, and all the parking lots, the town-owned parking lots. It's important as far as uh, picking up all the fines and the silt so they don't go into the stormwater system. Um, it's, it's also, um, at some point, we'll receive some credits for having a sweeper in a municipality of our size um, because of water quality issues. The existing sweeper, we've had some problems with it. We've put, we went into the records and looked, and I met with the maintenance supervisor, Fifteen to twenty thousand dollars just in the last few years. Um, we have put into that sweeper to keep it going. So, I think that sweeper actually had a fire. The harnesses burnt up on it at one point um, several years ago, and we kept the thing going. Um, but we've we've had problems over the years. It's given us good service. Uh, we think it's it's a good time to uh, trade the existing sweeper in and replace it. And going back up on my list because I overlooked the uh, DPW engineering evaluation and design. Um, what that's all about is one of the things last few years, as this board will recall, um, I'd really like to see us replace our salt shed. And it's, uh, it's an original building from the fairgrounds from the early 1900s, probably late 1800s. Um, and that was converted into a salt shed and has been used and been in service for public works for many, many years. And so we're looking at replacing that, but we do not want to overlook the DPW site as a whole. We're pretty tight where we are. Um, at some point, um, we're going to have to be looking at the DPW facility someday. It was built in 1950. So when we, if we just look at the salt shed itself as as a, a single replacement, I think it's necessary to just look to a bird's eye view of the whole facility and make sure that we locate this in the proper location. So what I'd be looking for is this 35,000 would get me to an area where I could get a sand shed permitted um, that meets all the compliance and the rules that are necessary for a salt shed. Um, and then uh, make sure it fits on the footprint that we have. Or um, one of the considerations may be um, to put it in our existing pit, So I don't know. So we're cramped for, for space, and uh, I think just looking at replacing the salt shed by itself doesn't make a lot of sense that we should just incorporate this and to call it uh, a review of the existing site along with replacement of, I keep saying it's sand, but the salt shed. But it may incorporate this may dovetail into sand also, you know, there could be a, an advantage to uh, having a shed that has dry sand and such also, or other ice melting um, products that are available that aren't as corrosive to put in this site. So that's what that's all about. Anything else you want to relate about capital before we start asking questions? No, Hannah, do you have comments? any comments? I think we're all set. Peter. Yeah, thank you. I'd like to just um, amplify two of those items. Um, the one that Steve just spoke to regarding the engineering evaluation and design work for the DPW site, um, I think it's very important for all the reasons that um, Steve described related to the urgency of replacing the salt shed. Um, if we don't get to that soon, it's going to get to us <laughs> and come down and become an emergency. And so um, it's important for us to in, you know, intelligently know where to place the new shed um, so that we can make improvements eventually to the rest of the site. I want to stress that by doing this planning now, um, we position ourselves to be able to take this, the quicker action that we need to take regarding the salt shed. Um, you see two other items that are identified as being out year um, forecasted items of some significance, a couple of hundred thousand dollars for uh, the maintenance building in 2020 and a $2 million placeholder for 2021. And I want to stress that those are just placeholders. Those are... Um, seen Kate's face. <laughs> yeah. Those are... Uh, it, it's an indication of the priority ranking for the salt shed and then the maintenance building and then the overall site. 
Um, but as Steve has said a couple of times tonight, the overall site is old. It's not in great shape. There's work to be done there. And so we need to get in a position where um, we have a plan and then we can go about you know, working through at whatever pace we find um, acceptable in terms of the financial commitment and the, the other priorities of the town. We'll fit it in to the right year when it's time to do the work. But we need to plan for the work now because the salt shed is becoming so urgent. In a similar fashion, um, but uh, a bit different in terms of an overall program, I wanted to speak to the $35,000 for the um, uh, William Street design work. Um, for that one, the, the I had it here just a minute ago. Uh, sorry. Um, you see the, that there's five separate intersections identified in the plan. Um, and for each of the next five years, we're proposing some planning money uh, to do some design work around those intersections. And for the year immediately following in the five-year plan, for each one of those intersections, you see a, an item that ranges from a low of 200000 to a high of $350,000 as a cost estimate for the work that would actually be done at these intersections. Um, I want to stress again here that those larger numbers are placeholders. Um, what will happen by, first, first of all, the fact that this section of the capital plan has even been created is responsive to the board's desire to see greater investment in traffic safety. We think that's a good thing. Staff certainly um, is heartily recommends that we, we do create this program. And we think that the smart way to do the program is to have this, um, I mean, we've got five intersections where we've had a history of uh, concerns and accidents um, that were a need to address both for traffic <laughs> safety more broadly defined and especially for pedestrian safety in the community. And by doing it in a way where we commit ourselves to relatively small expenditures for the planning work, we get a few different projects lined up and ready to be funded by grants. So we may or may not be ready next year to do a William Street project. We may or may not be ready the year after that to do a green and high project um, in, in terms of town funding of this magnitude. But we will be ready in terms of the technical work that needs to be done in order to qualify us to receive other people's money to help us build these projects. So uh, if we get a few of them lined up, then when we go for grants to fund, we may fund an individual project, we may fund a program, depending on the grant program. Um, in the absence of having the planning work done and a document that shows that the engineering has indicated that there is a worthwhile project to pursue, we're not eligible for the grant funding to help us actually make improvements at these intersections. So. I'll also just jump in and note that at the Traffic Safety <coughs> Committee, uh, the uh, risks, dangers at the um, Williams Street intersection have been discussed at more than one meeting recently, and uh, Traffic Safety Committee considered or inquired whether they should take some action to uh, highlight their view of the importance, our view of the importance of doing this engineering work, and we concluded that there wasn't any need uh, for them, for us to uh, vote to endorse this because it's already in the proposed budget. But Traffic Safety Committee as a whole, um, all of its members felt strongly that this is an important area to begin with scoping work to improve safety. Questions relating to the capital? Uh, we were talking about the sweeper, and Steve talked about the, uh, the different uses, and one of the uses he highlighted is sweeping the parking lots. And so, again, I will, you know, you reduce the amount of money that the uh, utility system, parking system, is contributing. And they're getting a big benefit from that sweeper. And I definitely think that they should be making a much larger contribution. I mean, we, you know, you, you hit that utility fund, I believe, quite hard. And yet the parking system is getting a benefit here. And I think we should look at really increasing the revenue to offset the cost here for the sweeper if we're going to make a purchase for the sweeper. If they're going to use it, they should be paying for it. We can make that part of our overall look at the um, parking transfer and parking revenues. And that's still in the works. And that's still in the works, yeah. 
Any other questions about the capital budget? Yeah, just wanted to look at um, the um, the two, the upgrading the whole facility. I, I know all of you have seen the matrix study that was probably 12 or more years ago now, but and I haven't looked at it in a couple of years. But it looked it's and it's not going to give you the engineering information and the footprint and all of that. But it had a pretty good concept for how that that facility should be operating, and I just wonder if there was any intention to use that as a guideline or, or refer back to that. You know, I, I hadn't really thought of that, um, but it could, it's a good suggestion. I mean, what we would normally do is meet with a consultant and provide all the information that we have, um, you know, on file with the matrix is one of them. So yeah, we would definitely uh, take, that's a good recommendation. Yeah. The other question, um, just to, for somebody to look into is the salt shed because of the age of that building and its historical value. Is there any possibility or any place to look where there might be some historical either preservation or take down and rebuild someplace else as an um, example of historical architecture? Yeah, I haven't. Uh, it's I, a great I did. Aside from the yeah. fact that it stood there for a long time. I did some research uh, years ago. We did have some other. Um, buildings in the area and I went to the historical the society and we went to the state and um, they were so far gone that they weren't interested. Um, I did an evaluation on this building probably 15 years ago um, and it was in pretty sad shape. So I don't know. It's a good question. That could be brought into this um, as a question to look into that. Yeah. Yep. And what can be done sometimes with um, situations like this where there's a, a historical structure or a potentially historically significant structure that is in such an advanced state of disrepair is at least some documentation of the building and yeah, some of the history of the building before it's demolished. Yeah, 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 and I, you know, I'm not aware of the condition at all. Yeah, great, thank you. Any other questions from anybody on the board or anybody who's in attendance about the Public Works Capital? Can I ask a question? Is that, oh, one, one second. Okay. Is it possible to get a list of the sidewalk repair schedule, like on sort of on an ongoing basis? I always get asked by people about sidewalks, and I don't know what to tell them. Well, one thing you can tell them that you know, <laughs> is with the amount of money. Seriously, you can't tell them that. when we yeah. contract when we contract sidewalks out, they cost a hundred dollars a foot. Yeah. So the last great section we did um, with a lot of funding was Main Street. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, um, an example would be from Bird Street, not even the Maple Street on Canal. That's a year's worth of, of progress. Mm -hmm. To answer your detailed question, we're doing a survey right now. Our engineering tech is actually out and he's walking and he's riding his bike and we're gonna hit every single sidewalk in town and we've come up we're kind of mirrored the old rating system, but added some new um, criteria. And we'll be able to give you a list. The list is, is just mind boggling because a lot of what we deal with is just taking care of small sections. Like in, you know, what I asked you for in, in the operating budget, um, we'll just take care of small repairs. And a lot of them are, um, based, are gonna be based on this survey. So I hope once the survey is completed, We'll categorize everything and make a list, and then we'll work off the list from the worst, you know, at the top, and work it down. So it will be available, but I think you'll be surprised um, how long it takes to get through the list. And so one of the things that kind of skews the list is if you know if we're working in an area and we have the construction equipment and everything in there, we can tackle that a little bit more efficiently you know, while we're right there. Or if we get funding to do something that's in a very specific area, you know, so although we do have the ratings, which kind of, which prioritizes it, that may not always be, you know, the order in which they're tackled. I think it'll just help people have a context that, yeah, the town gets it. Because sometimes I think people think we don't get it, but we actually do get it. So I think that would yeah. help. Yeah, and um, to, to reinforce that, um, it's still only $75,000, so it's still only going to go so far. But um, the purpose of increasing funding this year is 
you know, it isn't, it's not that the purpose of it is to mm -hmm. indicate that we get it, but I think that's evidence of the fact that we all understand that um, that's a really urgent need of the community and that it's both, you know, <laughs> sidewalks in almost all parts of town in some pretty severe condition of disrepair um, and the emphasis that we have as a community on walking. And so the two of those things just don't match up well and we want to commit more resources to getting the sidewalks in better shape. For the reasons that we've been discussing here tonight, um, we thought that it was better, given that we can't put as much money as we'd like to into both parts of this the sidewalk budget, it was better to put the increase for this year that we're proposing into the operating side because we can do the spot repairs by, by doing $25,000 instead of $10,000 worth of the spot repairs. We catch some of the worst isolated locations in a broader cross section of town versus the projects that are represented by this $50,000 in capital that um, Steve described to you, how limited that can be when we're doing a, a, a run of sidewalk. So. And also, we actually have, although we're updating it right now, we keep the map of our sidewalk ratings on our website. So people can go right online and see that we do recognize that <laughs> or what condition we consider it to be in. Let's give us the answer to your question for people to the Public Works website. Yeah. I spend yep. a lot of time on the Lister's website because you can see the assessors. That's right. Well, go to Public Works. Now I'll <laughs> Any other questions or comments from anybody on the board? Terry? Does this include general Microphone. traffic safety? Microphone. Oh. Does this conversation include general traffic safety? It does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just for the record, I, I encourage the increase because for the last couple of years, and probably most of you already know this, um, I've been advocating for traffic slowing, striping, or something northward bound on Route 5 as you're going out of town where cars tend to accelerate. And it's roughly from Bradley all the way to Vermont Avenue, but specifically the Harris Avenue area where the mouth is very wide. I feel there could be some sort of traffic slowing. I, don't need to be specific right now unless somebody has a question, but the town has had other priorities and I've been advocating for some time. Would this include that sort of um, budgeting? Mm -hmm. This is cover the, this sort the, of thing. The, man? the traffic the, safety. The, the $10,000 line item, the general traffic safety line item within the public works operating budget is the place where something like that would be addressed and um, that's why we're recommending that that be increased from five to ten again in response to the overall interest right. of the select board the traffic safety committee and staff right. to increase the town's commitment funding commitment to a variety of different traffic safety issues oh yeah right. because the town has yeah. had other priorities and and there's no crosswalk there, but the closest one is Bradley Avenue, and it is a very busy neighborhood, and theoretically people are not supposed to be crossing this, the walk, but they do anyway, and I think s slowing the traffic, because they do accelerate as they go out of town, would be a very practical idea. Right, so as you and I have, I'm I'll, sorry. I'll, I'll jump in and sure. say that uh, I know that's a significant concern of yours, and um, I know that you've uh, relayed that at traffic safety and in other contexts. Mm -hmm. um, the board can't promise at this time right. that right. Uh, any specific amount of the money that gets uh, voted on at town meeting for various traffic safety uh, projects will definitely get allocated to the Putney Road area running north uh, from town as you've been requesting. There's a lot, a lot of priorities. And as we've talked about in traffic safety many times, uh, solutions in that area um, are really very, very difficult to uh, find an engineer and a part of that road actually becomes state highway rather than town highway. So uh, I, I, we've heard your concerns. I just don't want you to go away from this meeting uh, expecting that there's a promise that money is going to go 
to that specific issue that you've been raising? No, That's absolutely not. I just wanted to clarify that this funding could possibly involve this specific issue that I have. And I am aware that the border is just past Vermont Avenue. And the thing I'm talking about is within the boundary of the town. I'm well aware of that, David. Thank you. Thank you. John? Apologize for being late. I, this work thing, it just gets in the way. <laughs> um, and I don't know if this has been brought up or not, but have we allocated any money for cleaning up the crosswalks during the winter time, or um, you know, after the plows have come through? And yep. That we yeah. are going to, as part of the um, winter maintenance effort um, after snowstorms this year, we're going to take on the responsibility of um, opening up those connections between sidewalks and crosswalks in the downtown area. Um, that's something we looked at a few different ways to see how it might be done better. Um, frankly, we were hoping that there might be a greater level of partnership, but it didn't look like that was going to be viable. Um, I turned to Steve and said, well, can we just take it back and take it on and he said yes we'll find a way so that's what we're going to do what we don't have is an explicit allocation to that like everything else with you know our winter budget it so much of it is hard to predict because you know how many storms are we going to get and how long is the winter going to last and is it going to be more ice or more snow and um so what we're going to do is track very carefully as a component of the overall winter maintenance effort what that additional burden looks like and we'll be able to report to you next year specifically on as a proportion of the overall uh, work that was required for this coming winter what that piece looked like and we'll we'll propose funding specifically for them roughly how many crosswalks are there that come into play about 15 or 20 yeah i think it's um it's right around that number because when you take we're talking basically here from <coughs> where right. subway is right all the way down main street so so it's just in the Main Street area? That's right. So it's none of the off streets or? No. So what happens with the off streets? I mean, they, Well, it's pretty difficult. I mean, well, I know it's some but I areas. Two years ago, they were. <coughs> right. Was, what we do is so with hot. some areas, they, they'll we'll go out with a loader. Right. And we'll clean up those areas. Some areas get picked up or get cleaned out um, when we <coughs> pick up snow. For instance, near um, Union Hill. Right. Um, some of the crosswalk people actually help out and they actually help shovel. Right. But it's difficult because it, you, we only have so many people and you're out in your roots and then really they have to be done after, you could have somebody literally there the whole time just keep shoveling as the plow goes by. So what we try to focus on once the storm's completed, then to clean those areas out. But it's, it's difficult. Oh, it is hard because, because I tried to clean out the one at the intersection of Maple and Fairview. Yeah. And there's nowhere to put it. Right. And and I know, you know, the, the plow people have to plow into that V. Yep. And then it's, and I, I just watched, I, I think two years ago, I watched the poor kids yep. trying to navigate that. And then it, once it freezes up, I mean, you guys are in there with bucket loaders. And, right. And it's a, it's a level of service. I mean, right. um, when I started, we had three sidewalk, or sidewalk tractors to remove snow. We used uh, firemen in an overtime situation to assist the personnel. And we had uh, three other people at Public Works, and they used to hand shovel, you know, like the Main Street Bridge and all these other areas. But over time, um, you know, we've reduced yeah. that, and we're lean and mean. So with that, you know, comes a reduced level of service. And so you know, we're trying to bring it back. We know that there's a high level of uh, population in the downtown area, you know, with needs. So well, I think the downtown is the most important area. It, yeah, and I, I agree. And then we have some of these areas that, again, where their crosswalks are and such, um, where they cross kids. So we're working on a plan. So right now we don't have a budget for that, but we're hoping to... We're, we're committed to including it in every post-storm cleanup and tracking the expenses carefully so that we can report to you about what that looks like compared to the overall, right. you know, cost for the salt and the sand and the cost for the overtime for the plows and the diesel. And, you know, we, we get a pretty good handle on what the rest of it costs when we, you know, go through a light winter or a heavy winter. A year from now, we'll have that same good handle on what this piece of it costs. It's too bad because last year's going to throw everything off. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we just had the ridiculous winter from nothing. So. Well, what they use is really good. <laughs> I'll speak up on your behalf. I. I inquired about that you know in my professional experience I had no right. dealings with you know 
both the handling of the storms, which we would do really well, uh, and with budgeting appropriately for it. And so I was curious as to how we would go about trying to account for the, the wide variations we have in how severe winters are. Um, and they, they use a sound five-year rolling average yeah. system. And then we look at the results of that. Fact, this year is a year when we tweaked it a little bit. You look at that, that what the, the straight math on the five-year rolling average gives you. And then if you feel like, you know, because there were a couple of especially severe winters or a couple of especially light winters in those five years, then you adjust that figure accordingly. So it's, it's, it's a really sound average number, but we're always going to have a winter that isn't average. And so we can't really guarantee where we're going to land. Right. Before the issue of cleaning out the sidewalks arose here in public for the first time, there were some discussions that we were having um, uh, with administration about how that issue was going to be handled. And I'm glad to hear that a plan has been developed because we hadn't had a chance uh, to get back to that, um, that the crosswalks in the downtown area will be shoveled. But it should be clear that there's probably hundreds oh, yeah. throughout town of areas where crosswalks intersect with roads. And um, we're only probably going to be having public works personnel shoveling 15 or 20 of those running along Main Street. And um, as somebody who walks throughout the winter in town, um, it is clear that there's many, many areas in town where even with the sidewalk plow going through, only one sidewalk plow, I know not three, um, where the sidewalks often become impassable. It happens because people plow their snow from their driveways into the sidewalks after the sidewalk plow has gone past. Um, it happens because the, the crosswalk areas aren't necessarily on the snowplow routes, the, the sidewalk snowplow routes. And so we're doing our best to keep the sidewalks open and to shovel some of those uh, crosswalk areas uh, to the extent that we're able to come up with money to do that. But um, as part of our uh, cost savings inquiries over the last years, we actually considered whether we should discontinue sidewalk plowing altogether. So um, we've maintained a commitment to doing winter sidewalk plowing, but um, it's really only limited measures that we're taking at this point. Because I know Martha loves it. Yeah. So can I just clarify one thing too? That I don't want people to uh, watching to to think that the town um, does uh, clears the sidewalks in downtown. The downtown people we are responsible for doing the sidewalks. With the, so the only thing the town is going to do is the crosswalks. I just want to make sure right. people understand that 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 the town is not doing the sidewalks. And we encourage all downtown property owners uh, yes. to be vigilant in clearing off their sidewalks as the snow starts to fly because uh, there are each year notable exceptions to that that wind up being impassable until the assistant town manager enforcer needs to go out to remind people to shovel their sidewalks. Thank well, you, Patrick. With all, and all due respect, for you know, it should be everybody's responsibility right. throughout the town. I mean, if shouldn't be just a downtown merchant, you know, if anybody, if you see a sidewalk, you know, and shovel, well, shovel it if you can. There's a, there's a lot of people that do, and there's yeah. a lot of fine people that shovel right. out fire hydrants, too. Right. And boxes in town. We see that all the time. So there are a lot of people that participate, which is helpful and appreciated. Anything else about capital? We had an inquiry about the uh, winter sidewalk uh, and crosswalk uh, filing and shoveling. Anything else about capital or operating the public works? <laughs> Anything? Well, this meeting was planned for an hour and a half from 5 to 6.30, but if we're done with our business, um, unless there's any other business to come in front of the board tonight, uh, we're looking for a motion to adjourn. Is there any other business? Motion to adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We oppose abstaining. That carries 5 0. Thanks to everybody who's been watching us on TV, whether live or recorded. Thanks to our PCTV operator. Thanks to our ASL interpreters and to everybody who's been in attendance. Uh, and thanks to the staff members who supported us tonight. Good night. I heard from work for 20 minutes.